And once again, happy Monday, everybody, and welcome inside the Dome Experience here at the Football Wing on campus with Scott Schaefer. It's our regular Monday visit. Not so regular to be 3-0 and at this stage in the season. That's historical, Schaefer, and we'll get to that uh, in due time. But kind of wondering what you've done since game time because you've had your hands full from some things we'll talk about going up against a very good team yeah. uh, this week. Where's the balance between celebrating it versus sorting through uh, some of the injuries and other things and going forward? I, you know, I always tell the kids we got the rest of our lives to celebrate victories, but we don't have the rest of our lives or minutes to prepare for the next opponent. So, you know, as soon as we get through Saturday night and we get back over here on Sunday, we're 100% moving forward to the next opponent, you know, LSU obviously this week. Um, you know, so that redirection is part of being a good athlete and part of being a, a focused coach, and uh, that's what we do. Okay, so uh, things were rolling. Uh, early second quarter, yeah. you're up two touchdowns. Uh, the exciting play is also uh, the turning point of the game as Dante yeah. Strickland goes in on the dump off from uh, Eric Dungy. Dungy takes a hit, illegal hit, ejection follows, and uh, you lose him for the, the rest of the game. What can you tell us about his bounce back and status right now? Well, he's doing good. You know, I saw him today. Uh, he's he's up and about. He's being himself. And, uh, you know, it was just it was so hard for me. He got hit and on the field. He wanted to jump right up and go. But, uh, you know, they said, no, we, we got to be smart with him. And uh, he's doing great. He'll be back. You know, he'll be back when the doctors tell me he can be back. Uh, but he's doing a lot better. And, uh, you know, so proud of the way he played. You know, I thought he played a, a very good game, you know, mm -hmm. albeit it was short. You know, that option, he dipped it, he pitched it. That was a hell of a play. Uh, you know, the play action pass, couldn't have thrown a better ball. Um, he's just a competitive, gritty kid, and, and uh, we can't wait to get him back. You know, same with Irv. You know, Irv was running yesterday, and I was like, can't wait to get you back. He goes, me too, coach. I said, don't go too fast, though. Listen to the doctors. You know, so when they say it's it's green, it's green. And uh, that's the approach we're taking, not just with Eric, but with all the kids. I think what's happening here is when you see the fan reaction, or the community reaction to a hit on Dungey or Ishmael, <laughs> they're taking it personally right now because they're getting excited about what those guys are doing on the field. Yeah, there's no doubt, you know, and you can feel the energy and the excitement, you know, with some of these kids that are making plays and, and they're exciting to watch. You know, someone asked me what I thought of Eric's performance, you know, before he went down and I said, I'll be honest with you, I was having fun watching him play and I was hopeful for the next play to be something that he could turn it loose. So there's a lot of good things going on. We got a lot of good young talent running around and, uh, you know, now we'll have our hands full with <laughs> maybe the best college team I've, I've coached against in, in all my years. This LSU bunch is very talented. You know, their twos and their threes are, are just exceptional football players. they got a good football coach that's been doing a great job for a long time. Okay, more on the uh, Bayou Bengals in, in just a bit because uh, they come off another very impressive victory and will enter 2-0 uh, and oh, and, of course, uh, in the top <coughs> ten as they have been for the, the last uh, handful of years for the most part. So how did you evaluate? Nobody wants to have to win the way you did, but you mm -hmm. got the job done. You had yeah. the backup quarterbacks. You're rotating them in there. At the end of the day, how did Austin Wilson uh, – grayed out in this yeah. game and uh, Zach Mahoney when you put yeah. them together what do you think you have? Well I think we got two good kids that want to win mm -hmm. and uh, they're good teammates and the kids are going to rally behind them um, you know I think both those kids are going to be competing to see who's going to get to play the most come Saturday if we use them both we use them both uh, you know AJ is still coming off uh, you know an injury where he, he's, he hasn't mm -hmm. thrown the ball you know the way he's capable of um, so we're going to we're going to take all three of those guys and try to figure out where they're at, see where Eric's at, you know, mm -hmm. and probably doubtful for Eric, obviously. But, um, you know, they're good kids. They want to win. They want to do right. And uh, we just got to make the best decision for the team. Now let's uh, spend a second here on defense because sure. the uh, plays continue to be made. And what we're seeing more and more now is outstanding pass rush penetration. It's not a fluke that Luke Arsenega has had two two-sack games yeah. now, and Ron Thompson spending a lot of time back there, too. Yeah, those kids have done a good job. You know, watching the game, I was, I was coming off the field, I was very frustrated with, uh, you know, the way it felt on defense, and justly so, uh, and came back, watched the tape, and, and two things. One, we can tighten up some things with, with uh, what we're doing, but two, you know, Cooper did a nice job at mm -hmm. Central Michigan. That kid made some plays. He threw, he threw some back shoulder things. He, he, he threw both to his right and left with duress. He made some plays, you know, and at the end of the day as a coach, old defensive coach, you get frustrated when people make plays on you and you always say, well, we can do it better. Well, that's part of it, but you also have to put your, you know, put, give credit where credit is sure. due. 
and the kid made some good football plays. That's why he's thrown for 7,000 yards, yeah. whatever the hell it is, you know. So, um, you know, now as we move forward, we say, well, what part of it can we control to make better? And that's what we're attacking right now. Okay, so uh, maybe a future pro quarterback there in Cooper Rush. Uh, certifiably a uh, first-day draft pro coming in here this week in Leonard Fournette, yeah. uh, an absolute beast, number one recruit uh, in America. His highlights are stunning. He comes off a career day. Uh, how do you break him down? you got to gang tackle. you got to get as many folks as you can on him. you got to play team defense. Uh, you got to control the football on offense so he's not on the field as many snaps. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a great player. He's one of the best players I've seen in a long time. And uh, it'll be a great challenge for us to go against a, a high-powered unit, you know, that really starts with him. Yeah, 228 yards, three touchdowns on Saturday in LSU's yeah. win over Auburn, and we'll uh, get to more talk about him. There'll be plenty of time over the course of the week. I'm curious what you think when a guy delivers the blows in the way that Fournette does, but uh, your team has been historically very good against the run. And, uh, Coach, I know uh, you're looking for all hands on deck this week at the Dome. No doubt about it. All right. Good luck. Thanks, Matt. Good being with you. The Orange 3-0 and the Bayou Bengals come calling this Saturday with a noon kickoff under the roof in the Carrier Dome.